you know, you get the idea. And you can, let's go ahead and cover that now, actually. So, say we we're like, well, our sand, a little bit, uh, okay, for for detail, the ones that end in D are detail, and that's essentially the detail is like the texture that it has. Like the sand has that wavy line texture, grass has certain different types of textures, the rock has a texture. Um, that's what those are. So if we want to change the detail, if we wanted it not to have those wavy lines, but if we also wanted to have like, um, wanted to add uh, just regular grass, apply and select. All right, I had to pause that. Um, I was doing that wrong. You have to have two details in here, and it allows you to have um, both I have the sand detail and the regular rock detail, and it gives kind of a ripple effect for the rock. So um, that's what that is for. Um, let's go ahead and rock test. That's not it, but uh, let's go ahead and paint that back over. Um, Oops, uh, when I was messing around, I lost all that. But this gives me a chance to cover a few more of the advanced details um, of the train painter. So let's go ahead and um, edit our test sand. Um, and we're going to call it uh, Rock Cliff. And we're going to go ahead and delete the normal. And this is just rock and rock detail. We're going to do apply and select. You know, slope min, we're going to change again to, okay, and the max to, oh, that's why I won't go far, farther than that, max to 90 all the way up, and this one up to 30. Um, and you notice here, we'll, we can once again apply it, but we notice it looks stretched here. For a rock cliff, what we can do is we can edit this to use side projection because right now it's projecting it top to bottom and so when you use side projection what it does is it does it uh, from the side so it doesn't look as stretched when you're up close um, and I'm actually going to change this detail because I don't like it let's go ahead and do apply okay uh, that looks a little better All right, and then the size is essentially essentially how close the camera must be before it starts rendering it. The distance is uh, how bold it shows up on the regular uh, rock. Um, and let's try that one. Alright, anyway, if I'm done messing around with this, um, I'm going to do, once again, do the quick painting of this. Alright. Now, as you see, we have our sand, um, our rock, and our grass, and it's starting to look a little bit more presentable. Um, and the rock is covering, you know, the, the steeper parts of it. Um, and the grass is the low-lying and flat parts, and the sand is near, going to be near our water block. So we have the start of a nice-looking map here. It still looks stretched to me, but we can work on that later. All right, so now that we've done the train painter, and of course you can add more. Uh, right now we just have those train materials. You can add a ton of different um, materials, doing different side projections, size, um, distance, and add another detail uh, layer on there. Um, after that, we're going to go to the material editor. Actually, we'll cover that in a different... Um, We'll stick with like the train uh, centric things. Um, the decal editor is something you'll actually probably be using a lot, but you'll need to get more de decals because this doesn't come with a whole ton. So decals are essentially something you like paint on or stamp on to the landscape. 
Um, right now there's not a whole ton. Um, and this is the add decal. You can scale, rotate, or move the decal. Right now this is scorch big decal. And if you look at it, it's just a scorch mark, like something got scorched there. And you can just add as many as you want there. Um, you can add, this is RX decal, scorch again. Um, bullet hole and player footprint. Those are two of the decals. Let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and for the heck of it zoom in on our sand if we really wanted to be great we could go ahead and organize those <laughs> rotate them and make them look like they're actually walking somewhere that's the that's what decals are and right now they really don't have a lot of decals. You'll have to find some uh, decals online or create them yourself. So um, After that is the forest editor. Essentially the forest editor is fairly simple. Um, paint is number five which is what you use most and right now there's only I believe one tree. Uh, it'll ask to add a forest and what you'll do is you'll essentially just paint a forest on um, There we go. Yeah, you have to go to example element, make sure you're on the paint, and then oh, and you'll go ahead and you'll paint the forest in. Right now it just paints those trees in. So what you'll do is you'll, once it's blue, you'll just go over your landscape and just kind of throw some trees in there. If you want, you can make the brush size absolutely massive. And then just paint it all over, and it'll just throw them wherever. All right, and then once you're done with that, of course, again, if uh, once you add more tree types, you can go ahead and throw those in the editor. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and select each element individually, um, and you can hold on. Oops should be able to hold down the control key to select all uh, multiple ones. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the ones you don't want. Like that one didn't look great. This one too far on the edge. Um, these random ones don't want them so close to the hill. That one's too far close to the edge. And you will go through your map and just edit it here and there so that it looks right. Um, you can add a few wherever you want. And obviously this looks pretty crap because it's one type of tree all over your your map. Um, you can add more trees once you get more under mesh, mesh is. You can add another one. Usually it's an art and then if you throw more, you usually throw them in forest. Uh, something like that. Um, uh, you can add new brush group and elements so you could do Add another type of forest, you could say palm tree forest or something like that. You can add another ele element, and then, of course, right now we only have example forest mesh. So, um, next thing is the road editor. That's fairly simple. Um, and I don't necessarily even use this when they have the road, a different road editor here that essentially just paints a road on. You can just go ahead and set the the different uh, waypoints, and it'll just paint it directly on. Um, it doesn't make sense here unless we had a path, but um, we'll cover a little bit more in depth. The river editor here is how you create your rivers. So let's go over to our river spot, which has trees in it. So let's go ahead and go back to just. We can go all the way to the left there, select elements. Nope, sorry. We have to go back to the forest editor, select, and select those. Hit delete, and those are all set. Alright. So we're going to grab our river editor and make sure it's on the add river, create river. And then we'll just click there, and then we'll just sit there and let's. 
you can click each place you want to bend it and then you can bend it all over the place alright and we'll just go ahead and leave it there since it's yeah since it's going to help. Now these red lines on the side mean hey guess what your water is going to look weird because it's not fully contained and it's just going to be have a weird looking side so what you there's many ways to do it you can obviously change the terrain or which is probably better you can scale your river or rotate your river um, or move your point you can do all of those things um, we'll do scale point for this and we're just going to go ahead and we'll scale that out and we're like you know what let's add a point in there so we can go to insert point click it there and we can scale or move that point either which way we want to go and then we'll hit scale and then oh it looks like we're actually we have to build up the bank on that one so we're going to go ahead and move that out as much as possible select our next point move that out until that's all set and our last point that didn't work Control Z again undoes a lot of that. All right, so we're going to want to scale this point here. So we're going to go ahead and scale that out. It looks like that one got missed, and we'll scale that one out. And as you can see, there are absolutely, except for this one point where we have to edit the train, which let's quickly do. Go back to train editor. I'd like to pull it up. Let's make that brush size a little bit smaller there, about 11. Uh, let's put the pressure up a little bit. That's a little bit too much there. And we don't want this thing in the way, so we'll go back to our force editor, select delete. And. Alright, let's go back to our river editor. And as you can see there, no red. That essentially, oh, there is some red. Hold on. It's just a little bit there. That can take a while uh, to get perfectly right, so you might spend some time getting the banks of your river looking right. And, then, you know, if you need to smooth them down again so they don't look too manufactured. Then go back to your river editor, zoom around, everything looks good, and that's your river. Um, obviously, you really want to make it so it looks like it comes from somewhere, not just from a rock wall magically. Um, but there's a few things you can change on your river um, if you select it. Um, you notice here, uh, you can change, you really don't want to do position and all that, that's really not it. But um, and you should look up these river properties online because all of them mean something. But you can add wave magnitude. That's mostly for like seas. You know, for rivers, it's not not really a big deal. The opacity, um, you can turn that up, and it makes it more foamy, I believe. Um, reflection, you can do like full reflect. Uh, underwater fogging, you can turn that up to like. It depends on how dirty I guess you want to make your river. Let's point up point seven. And you can see there it looks a lot darker. And you know, don't forget that while you're editing your world. Let's go ahead and alright, I think I have that figured out. So you go ahead and hit F eleven and that will load it. Uh, for you to run around in, so you can go ahead and look at your trees, look at all that sort of thing, run over. There's your river. You notice here it has small, tiny ripples. Uh, actually, those are pretty big. We'll have to change those, but um, you can run around your terrain, see if there's any spots you have to edit. You know, you can jump in your river, which is no oh, pretty shallow. I thought it was a little deeper, but anyway. Um, of course, see if you want them to be able to get out of the river. That's the biggest thing, really, is if you plan on having the player 
be able to reach that terrain, you need to make sure that the player can get through the terrain. It doesn't get stuck easily, gets frustrated trying to jump up and down. Um, so as you can see, fairly simple. Um, we have our trees, our terrain, our river. Alright, and that's pretty much how you test it. Um, and in the next tutorial we'll probably be covering a little bit more about uh, special effects such as particle effects, um, mission area editor, which I haven't used yet, um, a little bit more with uh, sketch material, data block editor, um, and that's pretty much about it for this tutorial.